You want to box and you want to lift weights, but you don't know how to do both at the same time. Well, today, gentlemen, we're going to fix that problem. And not only are we going to fix that problem today, but you're going to walk away from this video with different ideas and sample training programs depending on your goals and how you want to balance your training. You want to get jacked? Got you covered. You want to be aesthetic but still learn how to box? I got you. Do you want to be the best boxer you can but still enjoy the old weight session here and there? Say no more. Now, I see a lot of the guys at the gym that I work at doing both kinds of training, boxing and weight training. And sometimes when I speak to them, as is part of my job as a personal trainer at the gym, I've noticed there's a common problem. A lot of them don't know how to balance both kinds of training. They aren't sure how to fit both weights and boxing into their program and make it sustainable. However, I think one of the first problems is not a problem of time management or programming, but rather a problem of clarity. To be able to achieve your goal, you need to be clear about what that goal is. And if you're not, then you won't be able to find a solution or see consistent progress along the way. It's pretty simple. You can't reach your destination if you don't know where it is. So with that in mind, let's look at three potential directions you could go in regarding combining boxing and weight training. Your priority could be purely aesthetics based, trying to look good and then use boxing as a form of cardio. You could have a balanced priority where you want to look good, but you also want to learn how to box. And you could have a priority where you just want to be a good boxer, but you still enjoy the odd weight session here and there. First, let's look at having aesthetics as a priority where you just want to get jacked, but you enjoy boxing as a form of cardio. This means, unfortunately, that boxing will take about as low a priority in your program as any other form of cardio. However, I'm assuming that you still want to box in some way, shape or form. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching this video. And the simple way to do that depends on how you structure your weight training in the first place. You could either do a bro split, which is like like one muscle group per day, or you can do a push pull legs or any other kind of variation of those two workout splits. And you're probably doing some form of cardio around this as well. So what I would advise is if you're gonna replace your cardio with boxing, do it around your leg sessions, not around your upper body sessions. And just be careful doing it after a heavy pulling day as well, because if you have delayed onset muscle soreness in your biceps, you might feel it when trying to extend your arm from the eccentric contraction. Now I'm not gonna lie, this is a tough thing to navigate. So if your program is say Monday chest, Tuesday back, Wednesday legs, Thursday shoulders, Friday arms, or something like that, then it's gonna be pretty tough to find some space to box. Now I said tough, I didn't say impossible. So you could use boxing as a warm up on one of these days where you're not sore from that session. If you're doing Monday chest, you could do boxing before your chest workout as a warm up. You're gonna to have to be smart here because you don't wanna overdo it in the boxing to the point where it detracts from your weight session, seeing as muscle gain is your priority at this stage. But first, what I will say is it's probably beneficial to do some boxing training with a proper boxing coach to at least learn the technique first. Once you've got the basics down and you can get into a good groove on the bag and your coach thinks that your technique is appropriate to the point where it's at least safe, then you should be good to go. And then every once in a while, maybe have a session with that boxing coach just to check in and see how your technique is so that you're still doing things the right way. And again, the more sessions you do with the coach, then the better your technique will be and the lower your chances of injury. But anyway, I've got two workout plans here with some variations within those plans based on how often you want to box, assuming your priority is still to gain muscle and look good. So the first one, as I said before, is the classic bro split. Monday chest, Tuesday back, Wednesday legs, Thursday shoulders, Friday arms. Option one is to box once a week before your chest workout. Option two is to box twice a week before your chest workout and before your leg workout or after your leg workout if you're still feeling a bit sore. But hopefully the blood flow that you get from the leg workout should make you feel a bit better overall and then you should be able to box a little bit easier. However, seeing as you have done chest and back in the previous two days, I would suggest going a little bit lighter and if you're hitting a bag, just try and get into a consistent rhythm and don't throw too many heavy punches. Maybe put some music on, put some headphones in and just hit the bag repeatedly with continuous punches, that would probably get you the cardio effect that you're looking for. And option three, if you wanna add in more boxing sessions, is probably to do an extra session on your days off. So probably on a Sunday, if you're fairly well recovered, you can do an extra boxing session as well. But what if you're not doing a bro split? What if you're doing push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs, rest, and that's your seven days. So you're working out six days a week, resting one. When are you gonna box? It's actually pretty simple. You can box on your day off, option one. Option two is to do boxing before both of your push days as a warm up. Option three is to do boxing on your day off and before both of your push days. It's not the most convenient of programs, but let's be honest. If aesthetics is your priority, then boxing won't be. Now, the next section is if you have a balanced priority where you want to look good, but you also want to learn how to box as well. And you want to have an even balance of both kinds of training. This is fairly straightforward because you can have the same amount of boxing sessions as you do weight sessions in your program and everything can have its own standalone day. I think the best way to go about it would be to train four days per week and try and have those days relatively close together. And you understand why. The first session of the week will be boxing. The second session of the week will be a lower body weight session. The third session of the week will be boxing again. And then the fourth session will be an upper body weight session. And then in the next week, you can start with boxing again. And that way you can let your upper body recover after the weight session on the fourth day, take advantage of the rest, and then be fresh again when you have to box the following week. The last thing you wanna do is go into a boxing session with a sore upper body. And trust me, I've been there, it's not fun. What about if you wanna do three boxing sessions and three weight sessions? You can do that as well. I think the best way to go about this will be to do a push pull legs and three boxing sessions. So on day one, 
you'll box. On day two, you'll have your leg session for your weights. Day three, you'll box. Day four, you'll have your pulling session for your weights. Day five, you'll box again. And then day six, you'll have your pushing session and that will be your week because day seven, you'll rest. So the difference between having the balance priority, which we've just discussed, and the aesthetics priority that we were discussing before is that this time your boxing and your weight sessions are even. I think that one advantage of doing this where you have an even session of weights and boxing is that you won't have any trouble staying lean because you'll be burning a lot of calories. However, I do realize that for some people, it's not very realistic to train six days a week. And that's because of work scheduling, family commitments. There's a whole host of factors here. So if that's not for you, then by all means, go back to the two and two, where it's two weight sessions and two boxing sessions. There's probably a way you could even combine it into less days than that. So if you're really busy and say you could only get to the gym twice a week, your best bet will be to do two sessions. On the first session, you warm up with boxing. Then you'll do your upper body weights. And on the second session, you'll do your boxing and then your legs. And you can split the sessions pretty far apart so that you're well rested if you're only going to the gym twice a week. However, that being said, if you're only going twice a week, then your progress might not be as quick as if you're going more often. And that's normal. It happens in all forms of training. It's also important to note down for the days that I've put as rest, you don't have to just rest. You can do any kind of active recovery you want. It can be going for a walk. It can be going for a swim, stretching, foam rolling. In fact, I recommend doing that. It'll make you recover better. But what's really key here is you got to make sure that you're still doing the basic things, the important things. Are you sleeping enough hours? Are you eating well? Are you not going on benders and drinking and doing drugs and all that stuff? Because that's going to detract from your training more than the absence of a foam roller or not going for a recovery walk or not doing some ice baths. If you're sleeping two hours a night, then you're not going to recover. Moving on from a balance priority where we want to look good and learn how to box. Now let's look at if you want to be a better boxer. If your goal is purely to be the best boxer you can be, then this section of the video is for you. Regardless of whether or not you're going to end up being an amateur or a professional fighter, I still think that there are some parts of this video that you could take with you and hopefully they can help you on your journey. What we have to get out of the way is you must understand that all of your physical training and all of your weight sessions must be geared towards making you a better boxer. Everything should be about maximizing your performance in the ring and maximizing what you get out of your boxing session. Boxing is a sport of the mind. It's basically chess. And if you reduce your ability to perform well in your boxing trainings, then you won't be getting anywhere. It'll be defeating the purpose of your training. So with this in mind, the weights should never replace your training. It should complement your boxing training. Sure, there are exercises and workouts that you can still do, but you have to remember also that boxing has weight division. So if you gain excess muscle, it may even be at a detriment to you. Now notice that I'm not talking about strength. I'm just talking about muscle mass because strength is a product of the nervous system. It's how much force you can drive into your muscles. Having larger muscles can help, but at the same time in boxing, it really is something that detracts from what we want at the end of the day. So unless your boxing coach has identified a need for more force development and power, then you really shouldn't give weights that much of a priority if you just want to be a better boxer. I'm sorry to say, but you will have to keep that kind of training to a minimum. And even then, I would say that one of the best kinds of weight training you can do to aid your boxing performance is plyometrics and power-based training. Stuff like medicine ball throws. If you're wondering how to punch harder, your priority should be to improve your technique because improving your technique will have the largest carryover to your punching power. Your technique determines how much of your weight you can transfer into the punch and that's where your power comes from. If you're putting on weight and putting on muscle without having an appropriate level of technique to be able to transfer that weight into each punch, then you're really just slowing yourself down. Technique is the number one factor when it comes to punching hard. Now, yes, of course, if you get heavier, then you are able to punch harder because there's more weight you're transferring. But my assumption in making this video is that you don't want to jump up the weight classes. I'm just assuming that you want to get better at boxing. So going back to my personal experience in like the six week bouts of weight training that I've done in the past two years, I found that it really has actually detracted from my speed and just being comfortable in the boxing ring. Could be a placebo, but it is what I felt. And I'm just sharing that with you. I felt like I gassed out quicker and I didn't even punch harder. I got slower even. Let me know down below if you've had a similar experience or if you know someone else who has. This is even more important if you actually want to compete in boxing and have competitive fights because there's going to be weight divisions and you're going to have to fit in the appropriate weight division. And if you're too heavy, you're going to be fighting someone who's a lot taller than you with a longer reach than you and you're not going to have a fun time. But anyway, as a rule of thumb, you want to keep your weight as low as possible so that you give yourself the best possible chance in a competitive fight. Now, by prioritizing boxing training, can you still look good anyway? Of course you can. As a byproduct of training so much in boxing, assuming you don't eat like a fucking elephant, you will naturally develop the body of a fighter, which in my opinion is still an aesthetic type of physique. Because you're burning so many calories, you'll get leaner and leaner is probably the most important factor when it comes to looking aesthetic. Now, some people would even argue that it's better to look like a fighter than to look like a bodybuilder or a physique competitor. That's not what I'm saying. Could be. Is it Leon Edwards that has the most aesthetic physique? I'll leave that up to you guys to discuss in the comments. Now, as far as scheduling is concerned, I'd say however many boxing sessions you're doing before a rest day, have the weight session at the end before the rest day so that you can make the most of that rest day to recover and then be fresh again for your boxing training. And also what that does is let's say you're training in boxing five days a week. Most people spar on the Friday. Then you do the weights on the Saturday. You have Sunday to rest. And then you have the most amount of days possible between the weight session and the following spar 
firing session so that you're fresh and you give yourself the best chance. So as far as programming, that's what I would do. But also if you're training at a boxing gym, speak to your coach about this and I'm definitely sure that they'll be able to help you. So guys, if you made it this far, thank you. And if you're fighting for yourself, then I'm in your corner. And remember, in a world that tries to break men down, I'm here to build them back up. Thank you and I'll catch you in the next one.